Bula Vinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tavua. We love Today FM in Tavua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tavenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, disposable cards to be part of e-ticketing. Teachers told to be more careful of wrong information. And Fiji Airways invests $45 million in new aircrafts. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Smith. People traveling on buses will be able to use disposable cards if necessary once the electronic ticketing system comes into effect. With less than 40 days until the system becomes compulsory, Vodafone is working on logistics to ensure a smooth transition to the card system. Pranita Prakash has more. Passengers will be able to purchase the disposable cards from bus drivers. In the worst case scenario, if somebody gets on the bus and have forgotten to top up their card, there is a disposable card option which they can purchase from the driver on the bus. Now, the distinction here is that they're buying the card with cash. They are not paying the fare with cash. Once they get the disposable card, then they need to tap that card to pay the bus fare. So whilst the driver is uh, handling cash in terms of purchase of the disposable card, the fare processing still happens through the card. Despite the disposable card option, Vodafone is strongly urging bus commuters to get e-ticketing cards. And because the cards are not registered, or, or you can get this without registering, we'll be, we will not be able to block these cards if you lose it. And that is why it's advisable that people register and collect a permanent card. Because if you have balance on the card and you lose it, then you are able to report and we can block those cards. The disposable cards are available in denominations from $2 up to $100. And the balance on these cards expire a month after the card's first use. Meanwhile, there are mixed reactions from the general public on the e-ticketing system. Well, I think uh, it's a good system because it uh, eliminates... I need to carry cash. It's really a good idea because, uh, like, for the cash system, if like two or three people go in one time, the one at the back can pay the fare. Right for the eating, I don't know whether the card can pay for the whole fare or not. I like it because uh, so the drivers uh, don't steal our change. The registration process for e cards is still underway, and so far, around 150,000 people have been registered. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Teachers have been told not to listen to misinterpretations and misunderstandings of the reforms and why they are taking place. Attorney General Ayas Said Kayum was completely upfront with teachers of what is really happening amidst those trying to make it a political football. Rapate Valeme reports. Teachers have been told to be aware of those who are trying to pass false information. Now one of the uh, reasons why we're also uh, holding these sessions is essentially to be completely upfront with you as to what is happening, in particular given the fact that there's a lot of misinformation out there, there's a lot of deliberate misinformation out there, there's perhaps a lot of misunderstanding. Said Kayum also once again clearing the air on why positions will be advertised. Some people who, for example, are getting more than 15%, they're saying, well, I've been in this position, why should I need to have my position advertised? Well, because you need to go through the OMR system. But until such time, you are getting the new salary or 95% of it. He says head teachers who have their job advertised and should not get selected will still have pay rises. Director Civil Service Jane Kuran says in education, acting is automatic. The ministry itself and across like the deputy secretaries and the directors who were also in the same boat, they even had to put in an expression of interest to get the acting. Now, there weren't as many of them, and they're not direct service providers. Okay? So that's why it's automatic acting for people in the teaching profession. Kieran says the same will apply for nurses and doctors. She says job will be advertised where there is more than 15% salary increase. The consultation will continue in the Northern Division tomorrow. Rapata FBC News. 
Fiji Airways subsidiary Fiji Link will purchase three aircrafts for domestic routes, a $45 million investment. The national airline signed an agreement this morning with Viking Aircraft based in Canada. Ropate Valime again with this report. The purchase of the new aircrafts will replace the two existing planes which have been in use for over 10 years. These will be used to replace two of our existing twin otters and uh, we also have an option for a fourth new acquisition later in 2018. The new aircrafts come loaded with the latest gadgets as well. They have air-conditioned cabins and they also have state-of-the-art operating efficiencies and capabilities. Minister for Civil Aviation Ayer Said Kayum says the new acquisition will not only give Fijians more options to travel but also is a long-term strategic goal. I mean the fact that you have a modern aircraft that will help our pilots you know, progress seamlessly uh, from flying twin otters to ATRs and then getting onto the jets I think is a, is a fantastic uh, uh, model. This applies Viking Air Limited International says the national carrier will have the best fleet on the domestic front for its users. We believe that this platform will provide Fiji Airways and Fiji as a country the long-term economies of scale and a sustainable platform well into the, to the future. One of the three planes will arrive in the country in October this year. Two more are expected to arrive in October next year. Rapata Valime, FBC News. Methodist church leaders have taken a step forward to assist the police force in reducing crime in the country. Officers from the force will deliver a presentation to the church members tomorrow. Police Chief of Operations ACP Rusiate Tundravu acknowledged the support from the church. ACP Tundravu says their presentation will focus on the increase in offences against women and children. The presentation will be held at the Centenary Church tomorrow morning. Still to come, Suva Schools join Disaster Resilience Pacific Program and Chivning Scholarship Recipients Plan Future. That's coming up. Bula. Bula FM number 2 and seri. Five schools in Suva have been selected to be part of the UNDP Disaster Resilience in the Pacific Program One Day Workshop. The schools are located within the tsunami exposure zones and today received information about emergency measures and tsunami drills. Suba Grammar School, Veuto Primary, Stella Marist Cathedral Secondary and Rainbow Primary School are the five selected for the program. So we intend to train them and later they will go on and train uh, their uh, um, students and uh, train the school. So we are hoping to, to do a drill for Suba Grammar and, um, and Rainbow Primary on 28 September. And then uh, for um, Cathedral Secondary School and Stella Marist, uh, they'll have their drill next year, that is 16th February, and they will go uh, on 16th March. Generally, most Fijians have the perception that Fiji has no tsunami threat, but according to the former meteorology, Rajendra Prasad, it's only a matter of time. If you look at where do people learn from, it basically happens from uh, children. Uh, in, in, in schools and at all levels of schools we are encouraging that they have uh, this even in universities um, if not actually teaching in depth what uh, tsunami earthquake is but at least the awareness part coming to this workshop is kind of help, helpful so we can prepare in uh, case of disaster Head of schools are part of this workshop and at the end of today's session a work plan will be drawn on how to incorporate this project on the school curriculum Meanwhile, the last strong tsunami that we had nearby was the deadly 2009 tsunami in Samoa. Sabaratambua, FBC News.
The Vodafone Bar Riverside Carnival, which was opened last night, is taking the lead in the fight against climate change. The theme of the carnival, Save Our Environment, is targeted towards Fiji's commitment for COP23. Assistant Minister for Local Government Lorna Eden, while opening the festival, said the fight against saving the environment starts at home. And at home, let's try out composting for our gardens and recycling or reusing before throwing into the bin. And here at the carnival this week, please don't throw your rubbish on the ground. Four scholars from Fiji and one from Tonga have been awarded the Chevening Scholarship Program this year. British High Commissioner to Fiji Melanie Hopkins says that this program is an investment for the future for Fiji and Tonga. Anna Ravulo tells us more. Achievening scholarships, which has been around since the 1980s, has helped enhance the knowledge of more than 200 scholars. So since its inception, uh, which was in 1983, uh, we estimate that the Achievening Scholarship Programme for the British Government has delivered 270 scholarships uh, altogether across nine countries. One of the scholars who will be studying risk management and finance says the scholarship couldn't have come at a better time. And I believe the skill uh, and the experience and even the network uh, that I will actually gain from the Shivening program, I'll be able to uh, contribute back to the nation. For another, the scholarship award is still sinking in. I'm really grateful, I'm really honoured to be offered a chance for Commonwealth Scholarship at uh, UK because I know it will be a big boost in my, in my uh, career, uh, to my career path, especially in uh, science. The Chevening Scholarships are given every year with these five scholars leaving the country in a few weeks' time. Anna Ravulo, FBC News. Attorney General Aya Said Kayum says the financial sector plays an important role in moving the country forward. Speaking at the Fiji Institute of Bankers annual general meeting, Said Kayum said we are working towards truly becoming a hub of the Pacific. He says this requires a lot of work and the financial sector plays a huge role in capacity building. It must be there to be able to build your own personal capacity, build the institutional capacity, as opposed to, you know, ABI, which is more of a representative organization of banks. But I'm talking about professional development for individuals and as organizations. Ahead in sports with Melly, he will tell us more about the French T14, but up next, Rachel with the latest in business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up in business tonight. HFC signs new deal with Pacific Green. And in growing Fiji, we check out Suva's latest high-rise apartments. Stay with us. I'm Anare Sorbokroa of Nayabu Wendembukatelebu. Whenever I want to tune in to listen to great music, I always tune in to my favorite radio station, Gold FM, only the classic. My name is Lita. We love listening to Gold FM here at the Fiji Hideaway Resort and Spa. Gold FM, only the classic hits. We here at Tano Waterfront Lotoka love listening to Gold FM, only, only the, the classic, classic hits. hits. Gold Welcome back. Leading business tonight, Fijians will now be able to tap into the niche market of luxurious furniture made by palm wood. This after HFC Bank signed an MOU with Pacific Green that allows people to buy furniture at a much lesser cost. HFC Acting Chief Executive Raj Sharma says this partnership will assist people to purchase a bundle of furniture at a 50% discount. Pacific Green Managing Director Ravin Chandra says with this boost, their sales will be higher as they will be selling higher units of furniture to cover the cost. The MOU comes into effect on Monday for all HFC customers. The whole gist of this MOU is uh, you get 50 to 52 percent discount if you happen to be a HFC customer and borrow from HFC. Whereas in ordinary set you will get it for $18,000. With this new venture we will be able to sell more. So even though we are getting less margin the volume we'll be getting will be able to cover the cost of that. Elizabeth now joins us with the latest from the world of the money market. Good evening. Wall Street stocks and the U.S. dollar fell yesterday after President Donald Trump threatened to shut down the government if Congress fails to fund his promised wall along the Mexican border. 
He also threatened to terminate the North American Free Trade Agreement, meaning Canada, Mexico and the U.S. would all have to draft new trade treaties. Meanwhile, the New Zealand Treasury reduced its economic growth forecast for the year to June from 3.2% to 26 They've also cut back their growth projection to June 2018 to 3.7%. This steered the Fijian dollar to strengthen against the New Zealand dollar by 45 points when the market opened this morning. And that is all from me, Vinaka. Thanks, Elizabeth. We're looking at today's exchange rates and foreign currencies in the Fijian dollar. The Fijian dollar weakened against the Chinese yuan and the American dollar to close at 3.22 and 48 cents, respectively. While closer to home, the Australian dollar weakened to close at 60 cents, while the New Zealand dollar closed at 66 cents and the PNG Kina closed at 135. As for the commodities market, it was an increase across the index today, with oil prices closing at 48.36 a barrel. Gold closed at 1,200. And, 90, and silver closed at 17.10. And in growing Fiji tonight, Suva's profile for luxury apartments has just been expanded with the opening of the newly constructed The Peak apartment on Amy Street. With views that overlook Suva's CBD, this apartment is aimed at bringing luxury and convenience. Here's more. A family-owned land which housed a residential block has now been transformed into this. My parents, the thing was when they decided to develop the property, they wanted to build something that would actually be breathtaking, something that would have been nice and be sort of something someone could look back and see he did something for his grandmother and for his parents. The groundworks for the peak started in 2012 and initially faced challenges. You know, workers from Philippines and we have, have had quite a few of them actually helping us through the project and actually also it, it's because they have exposure to this overseas so it was quite easier for us to work with them to get this sort of finishings. The cement factory had also closed down back in those days uh, so we had a bit of issues in terms of that. We also had I think because of the height of the building it was quite difficult to get cranes to do it. After a soft opening last month, a number of flats are already occupied. Also quite a few people passing by have always come and requested they could see the apartment. So that's how we've actually got tenants in at the moment. They are the likes of UN, Bing World Bank, quite a few from ANZ, Kontiki. And we had the film crew from India come here, so they actually had taken quite a few of the flats. The sixth floor peak is a long-term stay with a total of 18 units. These units are six three-bedrooms and 12 two-bedrooms, ranging from $6,500 to $10,000. Vili Mainanangelevuki, FPC News. And that's business this evening. Now to the latest in sports. Here's Mali. Good evening. Up ahead in sports, Fiji and Rural work on mental strength. The latest from the Fiji Pearls camp. This and more coming up. Mirchi FM is hot. Mental toughness has been a key area of preparation for the Fijian Rua ahead of its debut in Australia's National Rugby Championships next week. The team will be up against some of Australia's best, including former Wallabies. Erori Tinuk reports. Having the mental strength to tackle the big names will be important if the team is to make a mark in the NRC. Especially uh, when playing against an uh, overseas, uh, overseas team, uh, they always want to uh, uh, tackle us mentally. Uh, uh, forcing us to do a lot of mistakes and being penalised. Uh, those are the areas that uh, we will be working on. Maintaining discipline against professional opponents will be another key area. The mentality part, uh, 
uh, just to stay composed, uh, don't get uh, red-headed, uh, and try to uh, try to play it slow. Fiji Warriors fly half Kenny Douglas says an organized game pattern can help the local boys achieve victory. Just need to stick to our game plans and do our set piece, our game patterns right. The traveling squad for the Fiji and Rua side to Australia will be named tomorrow. They will face Brisbane City at 7 p.m. on Saturday at Ballymore Stadium. Eroni Tuinuku, FBC Sports. To put up a decent fight against South Africa next month, the Fiji Pearls will need to be at its fittest. Now helping the team reach its desired fitness levels is former Pacific Sprint Queen turned fitness guru Michele Batimala. The familiar face in athletics will now be assisting these netball players. The Fiji Pearls training squad had a tough session this morning with the help of Michele Batimala, who is trying to build up their base. Right now they are not as where uh, they are supposed to be. Uh, so we are trying to build up their base, uh, have a strong base, um, and I know we still have a lot of time. Batimala will also be working on getting the aerobic endurance up and work on strength and speed of the players. They need to last the game, uh, play that uh, one hour or 15, uh, four quarters, um, and, and continue uh, right through. Eh? Uh, uh, maybe in the past there has been uh, no uh, inconsistency, uh, in the in the game, uh, in terms of their fitness, they do not last. The, come the second quarter, they are going down. 15-year-old Laisani Wanga, who is the baby of the squad, is trying her best to gel in well and learn more from the experienced players. I feel honoured to be playing with them. And they've been doing this for how many years? And I'm just a newbie. And I'm uh, looking forward to learning from them. The Fijian Pearls will be playing test hard on opponents, but they need these matches not only to expose our players to these high-intensity matches, but also to remain competitive. Meli Tavanga, FPC Sports. Female police officers and police wives are contesting for the top prize at this year's netball and volleyball tournament in Suva. Police Wives Netball Association President Selina Tunravu says the tournament is being used to choose the best players to play for them in the Schooner Bowl next month. 39 volleyball teams and 6 netball teams from all over Fiji are taking part in the selection tournament which ends tomorrow. For allowing us to, be, to have a tournament like this where we will just uh, leave behind our kitchen, our washing machines and all just to come and uh, relax. A time of uh, bonding with the uh, other wives from the other division. The semi-finals of the Tucker's Ice Cream Fiji Secondary School's Basketball Championship, which is underway in Suva, will be confirmed later tonight. 47 teams are taking part in the three age groups, looking to secure top honours in school's basketball. Rohit deal with the story. More than 400 students from all over Fiji have opted to spend their holidays playing basketball at the highest level. Uh, having an event during the uh, second term of the school holidays or on the school holidays uh, is something positive that the, the, the kids or the children, uh, high school uh, students can look forward to. Low scores have been recorded in majority games, giving a clear indication that the disparity between schools is decreasing. Really come well prepared, or schools have really come well prepared for this year's event. It's uh, a traditionally um, uh, strong uh, event on our annual calendar. Yet in secondary school failed to impress at last year's competition and were dominated by Latter-day Saints in the finals. The team has been winning some matches this year and has set a target of winning at least three titles. We have uh, high chances in a few of the grades. Uh, we're aiming for at least three titles this year and hopefully we can uh, get there. Uh, we're on track to, to, to achieve that. Uh, we just need to stay focused and uh, see how it goes. The semi-finals and finals will be played in Suva tomorrow. Rohit Deo, BC Sports. What of Fiji football coach Christoph Gamel is using all the time he has to build his team for the match against Indonesia next week. With help from sponsors Vodafone, the site now has a recreational center at the Fiji FA Academy in Bar, where the team can bond better when not on the field. Gamel says the time off the field is very important for team building. After we have to put everything in the good uh, way. Yeah? The first is the work, hard work, and uh, when you have a free time, it's important for the players to, to cut uh, with football or to enjoy uh, just to create uh, team, uh, team building. Huh? It's important that they can express also themselves outside of the field. 
Former Fiji Sevens rep Semi Kunotani played flanker to help his Toulouse side beat Racing 92-1914 in a T14 pre-season encounter. Celebrity referee Nigel Owens have been in charge of major rugby matches like the 2015 Rugby World Cup final and he'll take the whistle for the Bledisloe Cup battle this weekend. But this afternoon the international referee went back to school refereeing an under-15s game in Auckland. In tonight's play of the day, former, Bla former Black Caps skipper Brandon McCallum guided the Trimbergo Knights Riders to an eight wicket win over the St. Nits and Nervous Patriots in the Caribbean 2020 Premier League. McCallum scored an unbeaten 40 rounds of 14 balls, while his teammate Bravo scored an unbeaten 38 rounds of 10 balls. That's it from Sports Tonight. Angie joins you later on with weather. And in new media, Galaxy Note 8 released again. Stay with us for the details. Bula, Kera Mai Sinatoka, Kera Ndo Tali Taka Navarro Rong on the Radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti. Hi, how are you? How are you? Samsung has unveiled its Galaxy Note 8 in a return for the high-end smartphone brand, which was recalled last year in a worldwide debacle that cost billions of dollars. And it's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. Rain, rain, go away. Now that's what everyone's wishing for. Yes, we did have adverse weather conditions today due to the low pressure system that is currently moving over us. Now, let's take a quick look in the west. We had another cloudy day with few light showers. Eastwards from Pekhaba to Suva, a very rainy day with intervals of heavy showers. Keep warm, more rain is expected by later tonight. And up in Vanualevu, a cloudy day yet again but temperatures still stayed a bit high. At sea, southeast winds 20 to 25 knots with rough seas, still not a good time to go out fishing. And for the tides, high tide tonight will be at 926 with a low tide at 336. The beautiful sunrise will be at 619. For tomorrow, there is however some fantastic news on the horizon with weather expected to improve ahead of the weekend. And tomorrow's temps, Lambasa will be the warmest at 30 degrees. And looking further into Saturday, it is expected to be generally dry with very light rain indicated for Suva and few parts of the Western Division. And that's our FPC weather for tonight. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. On Fiji and Pulse today, we asked, are you getting tired of the cold weather? I think there's a lot of rain in the country for the past few days and it's hard to get up from bed. Not really, but um, the only problem is when you come from home to work. It's how you get oh, yeah. on from the bus to work. It's oh, rainy oh, really oh, weather. No, I like cool weather. Sunscreen is a big part of preventing skin cancers, but chemical-laden sunscreens have their drawbacks. That's why scientists are scoring the natural world to understand how plants protect themselves from damaging ultraviolet rays. Recapping the main stories, disposable cards to be part of e-ticketing, teachers told to be careful of wrong information, and Fiji Airways invests $45 million in new aircrafts. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question, this week we are asking, should those found guilty of drunk driving have their license terminated? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day taken by Ilaitia Uwe Lunam, a beautiful sunset at the beach. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us by Facebook page FBC News.
news. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC news. That was your FBC news for tonight from the team and I. Good night. Radio Fiji 1 and Radio Fiji 1 